Hey everybody, welcome back to Kirby Triple Deluxe. Today, we're jumping into the third level, uh, Old Odyssey. You might notice that the worlds are starting to spell a little thing out. Well, we'll get to that, but that's a bit of a Kirby tradition. I guess that started with Return to Dreamland. That spells out a story-relevant word, but we'll get into that later. Now we have these Waddle Dee trains that will be coming in from the background all the time. Oh, and like my favorite power in the series now, uh, Leaf. Leaf is just amazing. Um, it's really powerful. It has a lot of cool attacks like this. We can just shoot a few projectiles downward. This little attack you do, this little normal attack, I guess it would be, is pretty effective. It swirls around you and then goes up into the, uh, well, up and diagonally from where you're standing, that is. It's really just really strong, really effective. This attack here, up and attack, is just it's effective. I believe you can also charge it up, yeah, and make a little tornado. I don't use that much, that's not super great, but it, it, it's alright, it's alright. Having one attack out of a myriad of great attacks is, is not bad, what am I saying? Anyway, you can also guard and that makes you completely invincible to all but every single, actually every single attack, you're just invincible to it in Trouble Deluxe, so yeah. Leaf is really, really good for bosses, mid-bosses, everything. It is a bit overpowered though, I guess, and that's why I kind of like Archer a bit more. Because, uh, you have to duck to be invincible, but whatever. Uh, at the start of the stream, you want to immediately drop down to the left, because that will give you a 3D warp star if you break a terrain block. Just gotta avoid those shots, those, and the guy got so, okay, hey. But I didn't do great in avoiding that, did I? But now we can discard and avoid it. Uh, and then in the background here, if we break that one, we have an optional door. And we just have to use this 3D tilt cannon to break through all these durable blocks, and then... I wonder which one was the right one. Probably the one we saw the sunstone in. Yeah, it's not, not a very tricky puzzle, but hey, what are you gonna do? And do we need rock? I guess we don't... I don't know if we need rock, but... I'm sure it'll be helpful for avoiding, uh... These trains. You can't hit a rock! <laughs> okay. You can hit a rock. Actually, I don't think the, uh... The guard from Leaf actually makes you invincible to trains, so... There's the one thing you're not invincible against, I guess. Machinery. Anyway, with this room, we actually did want to keep rock, because it'll uh, let us uh, crash through all those, um... Uh, blocks there to reveal this, and that is our uh, keychain. I really love that part of the song. It's just really, really nice and exciting, and it just kind of fits Kirby so well. This is like the perfect Kirby soundtrack for Kirby. It's happy, fast-paced. This gets you, you excited to drop into a train. Okay. Anyway, we have, an hyper we have a hypernova section here. And you can imagine how many trains we're going to get vengeance on for the two times they hit us. But frankly, if you get hit by a train twice and you live, you're pretty damn lucky. So fun fact, if you don't actually suck up the front of the train, it will continue to go. Um, you'll just have, uh, it'll just have less parts. It'll remember what segments you sucked up. So the main thing here. We have these turnips we can suck up to break up durable blocks and uh, kill enemies. I don't think there's actually anything over there. Uh, but we can use to kill enemies and break durable blocks. And uh, suck up these chains as well. Kind of like lost to say what to, uh, of what to say for hypernova sections because, well, uh, it's a hypernova section. They're kind of similar. But suck up that train there. It has a chest on it to get the sunstone from it. And there is a little secret with these turnips. I really hope I can show it off. But it's kind of based on luck. We need to make both these zero blocks here to reveal a key and a door. There we go. And nah. <laughs> That's not the secret. Let's try it one more time while I missed that key throw. And now. Nah. There's a little easter egg. Um, essentially there might be a sexy turnip at one point or another. Don't question it. It's weird. Um, and it's, I don't know the exact chance for it to show up, but it's not incredibly common, apparently, because it's not showing up for me here. 
Nah, but that's all sunstones as well as the rare keychain, so we've cleared out the first level here. And these poor creatures, like, the, the, the waddledees we killed, they're just being crushed and sucked up into Kirby's void of a stomach. And that's, nah, I don't know why I bothered sucking that up, I knew that wasn't it. Whatever. Okay. No turnip easter egg for us. Turnips don't want to be nice to me. Wonder if it is a reference to like Mario 2 with the turnips, because Nintendo seems to just have a thing for turnips. Since Mario 2, like. And by thing for turnips, I mean like this game, Mario 3D World, which was an obvious reference in a lot of ways to Mario 2. So I actually like really don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Uh I can't remember these guys' names. I think they're um. God, what are they? Birds. They're birds. They're like egg, egg dudes. No, that's not it. I don't know. They're birds. That's all you. Oh, you shot at me. That's all you need to know. They're birds. And really, that missed. That's. Oh, he's not even over there. Gotta be fast, and he's gonna move out. Oh, that's a sexy turn up. There he is. C cool, I guess. Oh, and we have to suck up the uh, endo as well. Right. Okay, well, let's be done with that. See how we do here. Oh, that's a seven. How many? That's a one. It's a one. One is the highest number here. Uh, how many months have we gotten? I feel like I haven't gotten that many. Done pretty badly on the goal game here, but uh, whatever. It's not a problem. And what are our keychains this time? We got Parasol Waddle That's why it looks really weird. Waddle Dee's, like, I usually see them brighter than that, but okay. Oh yeah, that's our rare keychain, just Wispy Woods. Kind of cool. Twister. Tornado is an ability that's really underrepresented in the series. Like, it's in this game, it's in Return to Dreamland. And it might be in Squeak Squad? Maybe? I don't actually know. Missile is also a, ser uh, a power that's not appeared much at all since Amazing Mirror, actually. I don't think it's appeared at all. Again, I might be in Squeak Squad, because Squeak Squad and um, uh, Amazing Mirror were made by the same team. It wasn't Hal that made them. It was someone else, I don't remember. They're, I don't I don't think they're uh, making games anymore. Um, so, you know, who cares, but... Uh, yeah, it wasn't Hal that made them. So they're they're quite similar to one another in music and graphics and uh and design. Anyway, new power here, needle. Uh they actually removed an ability from this in in this game from Return to Dreamland. Is there anything down here? No. Uh in Return to Dreamland you could do a little uh dash with it. You could roll into a ball and go forward really quickly. For some reason they removed that. I don't actually know why. I I have no idea why they might have removed that, because it was really effective and cool. I guess because it, oh well there there it goes. I want to say it's because they they realize wheel kind of already does that, but I don't know. I I felt I feel like they kind of should have kept it anyway because whatever. Wheel has its own use case. Spike can share a little bit of that and be a little bit more effective offensively at the same time. It's kind of weird. Spike though is a pretty alright ability. You can shoot a little spike upwards and downwards with your feet in the air. Um, to enemies, and you can... What else can you do with it? You can just charge up and shoot spikes around you. But otherwise, um... It's not the greatest ability. If they had kept the rolling thing, it would have been a bit better, but... As it is, it's just kind of not that effective offensively, or defensively, really. Because it's not like Rock, where you're invincible while you have your spikes out. So, it's not really that great. It's definitely not one of my favorite abilities. Got all these broom headers here sweeping up their little ridge. I never understood why do like shows and, and games and stuff have these people just sweeping the ground. That seems really ineffective because the ground is gonna get dusty again anyway. You sweep your house for a reason, you know, because you live in it. You don't. Well, you could live outside, and that's unfortunate. But that's a dark topic to get into. Not really dark, just depressing. So moving on from that, uh, yeah, uh, I just don't get it. So this room, we're gonna drop to the right here from these collapsing blo blocks and uh, kill that Dekabu to reveal this optional door. 
And we just have to keep... Oh, ooh, that's a new power. And actually one of my favorites. Kind of saw it before in a keychain, but this is Mike. And I think in Return to Dreamland, they introduced Mike actually having three different attacks. They have a very short range, or short, um... Narrow, narrow is a better word for that. Uh, attack, where it's just basically right in front of Kirby. Um, and then they have one that's a lot wider. And then the third one we'll be seeing in a bit. And it's uh, basically a screen nuke. Kills everything on screen, it's really great. So Mike got a little upgrade. Though it is only three uses. Uh, I don't want to use it here. I'll use it here, why not? <laughs> I love it a lot, it's really cool. Unfortunately, then it goes away after that three uses, or those three uses. Very few powers are like that. The other power is Crash, which I actually don't know if it's in this game without being like the true arena or the arena in general. I don't know if it ever appears in the main story. I want to say it doesn't because I don't remember it appearing, though. Frankly, it's not a power I use much when it does appear because it is that one use. And you really don't need a screen nuke for Kirby, frankly. But, uh, whatever. So we have to suck up Bonkers after we beat him to get Hammer here. Because we have these stakes to pound in, which we actually have to hit from the top, because, you know, that's how physics work. So this one just has a life, nothing special, but... If we fly a little bit above the end door, not the end door here, there's a door there in general, we can uh, pound that and, and get the levels of our keychain. One of the few cases where you do absolutely need the, um, the sub-boss's ability in order to get something. Luckily, they don't do that much in Triple Lux. Uh, I guess they learned from Return to Dreamland. That's kind of a bit annoying. You want to be very careful in this room because after the, uh, you want to not break this fifth pillar down because you can just go under it and you'll see it is potentially going to break a chest if we did uh, knock it down. So we want to keep it there, get this chest for the final sunstone. One thing that I appreciate about Triple Lux and in the in the future Robobots design is that they tend to place bottomless pits next to uh, places where you can easily screw something up like that. Because if you know you screwed up, you can just die and then you'll restart the room and you can not make that mistake again. I really appreciate the design because in Return to Dreamland, it's very often that you just have to either uh, slowly let an enemy kill you or just restart the level. Which is not ideal. I would rather not restart the level, but whatever. Anyway, that was really bad. <laughs> Hamster, really? Wow, okay. St Why is his name Storo? Uh, ten Kirby's? What a deal! <laughs> well, now it's... <laughs> now that just seems kind of lame by comparison. I mean, I just got ten of those. Oh yeah, so this uh, also brings back, which one of you again gave you the uh, wearable items? It had a shoe, it had, I believe it also had a cannon that you just held on your head and shot in front of you. Um, but this one kind of takes it and just makes them background and foreground elements. Or things that affect the foreground and background, rather. Uh, we already saw that with the cannon before. Unfortunately, the shoe doesn't make return. Which is, I mean, it really is not important. The, short, the shoe was actually one of the most annoying ones, honestly, in my opinion. But, uh, sure doesn't make a return. But, uh, this game kind of does it and just makes them uh, affect the foreground and background, which is kind of cool. We'll see it right here, I believe. With, oh, maybe not. But basically, we're gonna get a laser bar. Might see it soon, I don't know. Anyway, Hammer's also a really fun ability. It's really, it's kind of like Hammer if it, or, yeah, it's, Hammer's kind of like Hammer. It's kind of like, um, Sword, if Sword is really strong. You have this up attack, which, uh, takes a long time to charge up. But it is really, really powerful. Like, that can just obliterate enemies if you know um, when to use it. Otherwise, you just have this little dash attack, which you spin around. Really effective, lets you move around freely. And one interesting thing about Hammer, um, I don't know if it's the great place to show it off. Nah, fuck it. Uh, if you hit X, which is to let go of your ability, while you're dashing, you actually throw the hammer and it explodes. You also do get rid of your ability, but uh, it's a cool way if you plan to like use it against a mini boss anyway. It can be a good finisher move. A better finisher move is honestly just dropping the ability normally and sucking up the star and shooting it. But hey, it looks cool, and that's all that matters. Your hammer explodes. Anyway, here's that little laser bar. We can use it to break bomb rocks in the background to open the way forward, and of course for puzzle solving. 
to, uh, to get sunstones and whatever. But we can also just use it to kill these poor Bronto birds. They're just living their lives in the background. Like, they didn't... They didn't... They don't know what's gonna hit them. And they don't deserve this. They've done nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing. But there go the Gagatsos. There goes Poppy Brothers Jr. They're all dying. Everyone dies, including me! <clears throat> anyway, break every single bomb back in that area to get a uh, sunstone. And we no longer need this. So it can go away. This tool of murder and destruction can leave my hands. And we need pie. Should need rock. I guess we need these ice too. But well, rocks pie just better because we're having sloped areas. <laughs> Otherwise, if we're having sloped, it's, uh, uh, we're having sloped. It sounds like I was saying like for dinner. We're not. We're not eating slopes for dinner. That's just weird. But hey. Oh wait, wait, wait. After that first slope there in this background area, you want to uh, just go to the up to the upright. To that area there, covered by vines, and there's a sunstone uh, covered by a pacto. You gotta... That thing was just sleeping! We killed that thing in its sleep, poor thing. Poor thing. It does not... The, the Kirby enemies do not deserve this. They're not even enemies. They're just living their lives. Yeah, sometimes they breathe fire, but that's not their fault. <laughs> they, they probably can't help it. I mean, this thing is kind of an asshole. It's, like, actively attacking me, so it, it can die, but... Everything else, I mean, what has it done wrong? Uh, we actually do need fire here. Excuse me. We do need fire here in this upcoming room, so we just need to make this drain block. Carefully get past that. And in here, I believe we need to light a fuse. Yep. This one's obviously not very complicated. These do get pretty complicated later on. There's one in particular that can take a little bit of uh, figuring out. But again, it's kind of cool that they took, found some way to make these at least more interactive, if not more interesting. And we're, you know what? We'll keep you alive. You're just doing your job, man. You're trapped in, well, you're trapped in this room. There's a door. You're not really trapped at all. You could leave any time. But if you're on the payroll, then you probably shouldn't. Like, then you're going to get fired. You're going to lose your job. Those are synonymous. <laughs> uh, but then, like, how will he pay for his family's food? And stuff and expenses. Life's a, life, life of a Kirby villain's hard. Anyway, need to get past this Gigatso here because below it is the rare keychain. Usually you'd have to fly above it, but with fire you can just sort of dash right through him. But that's it. One thing I do like about Triple Deluxe more than Return to Dreamland as well is that Return to Dreamland had some levels that felt like they just kind of dragged on a bit too long, but Return to Dreamland, or, sorry, uh, Triple Deluxe, kind of gets these bite-sized levels just right. I'm sure it also helps that it's, a, you know, a handheld game, but I think it just generally works better for Kirby uh, to have more bite-sized levels than long, dragging-on levels. But, hey, that's just me. Okay, old Kirby. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know I was a sprite. That's, that's a thing. And yeah, you get different ranks at different uh, level of keychain collecti collectability collect collections. When you get different amount of keychains, you get different ranks. They don't do anything. It's just a fun little thing. Kirby loves giving you useless things like level ups in uh, the Superstar uh, boss fight with the the two like code things in Great Care Offensive. And I think were they in Milky Way? I don't. Know, I don't remember. This song's really nice. Oh, and there it goes. Ruined by the invincibility candy. We have this really nice, happy piano piece. And then it's just like, eh, here's this. Anyway, we need that invincibility candy, though, to break open that, um... That bomb rock. To get that sunstone. We also probably could have just used the fire's dash. That might have made us invulnerable, invulnerable to the spikes, but I'm actually not positive of that. Safe for this, be invincible. Of course. And we need to ignore that door so we can go under the floor here and get this, uh... This 3D warp star to the other door, which will lead us to the background of the next room. And, uh, do I want Archer? Well, I'll walk right into Archer, apparently, so... <laughs> Either way, whatever. And... Oop. Yeah, that wasn't really gonna go well. Okay. 
god, I just love this song. It's so relaxing and just fun. Anyway, we need to be in the back end of this room because there's an optional door. And we actually do need Archer. We need to tilt this guy enough where we can uh, arc that arrow through him. Break him over, break him over, break him up. And then past him is the Sunstone. Kind of fun puzzle. Not complicated, but fun. This game does use the gyro a lot more than something like Robobot. So if um if gyro controls aren't your thing, not that this game really like, uses them in any complicated way, uh, uh Robobot does not really use them much at all besides like tilting platforms. So uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a little hole in that cliff there that we can look through, and don't let these quarters fool you. Just follow these stars to get your rare keychain. Pretty simple, but I've missed that one more times than I like to admit, just because I missed that little hole in the cliff. It doesn't really look like anything special, frankly, but hey, I guess along the other holes that are completely see-through, that one does stand out a little bit. Kirby tends to have those cinematic sequences like that where you're just killing things, taking the control away from the player a bit, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. But hey, now we're in the snowy section of the level because we went really far away. I do kind of like that they have a lot uh, reasonable transitions for stuff like that because like, it wouldn't really make sense to go from kind of deserty cliff region right to uh, winter area. But here we are and it kind of makes sense because we you know, took a warp star and went very far away. I also like the background here. It kind of reminds me of the Fountain of Dreams. So I had to wonder if the, there's more of them, or maybe the Fountain of Dreams just like froze over at some point, and here we are. Anyway, ignore the end door there, because you want to go past it to get a 3D Warp Star to get the level's final sunstone. And then we just need to make our way back to the end door, avoiding all these gorders. I like this section quite a bit. It's pretty fun. But that's it. I do wish the backgrounds of these, or the visuals of these goal games kind of changed though based on the level you were in. Because it does get kind of repetitive having this after every single level and it looks the exact same. The background does change based on how far you get, but that's not really um, much of a change, of, of a worthwhile change that is. But hey, whatever. We have a Stactus? Why is that one different? Why does it deserve to be differently colored? And the rainbow drop. I find it fun that they have the rainbow drop, by the way, in Dreamland 2, a black and white game. Like, they could have just waited until they had some color, or maybe made it a Game Boy Color game. Game Boy games do have a bit of color programmed into them, for, like, use on the Super Game Boy, or even on the Game Boy Color. But, obviously, the Game Boy couldn't really display them. But they do have a bit of color programmed into them, anyway. God, this level is so pretty with the snowfall in the foreground and background, and I think we need Circus. So, Archer better get out of the way. It's just so pretty. I love the look of snow levels in every single game. They're always just so pretty and, and tranquil, and I love it so much. And I really wish ice levels were more fun because of that. Though, again, Kirby kind of does it well anyway, so I don't really mind there being uh, snow levels at all. Kirby kind of just does everything well. Kirby games are always either kind of just alright, or they're absolutely amazing, like this one. Just a joy to play. I don't really want to play. I kind of want to keep Circus. I think it's fun. Uh, we do have a mid-boss coming up. Which is Flame Galboros. Of course, he's in the ice region. I, w I don't know. That's not where I would choose to be as a flame monster, but... What are you going to do? Yeah, that move... Circus isn't really the greatest for mid-bosses like this. But uh, it can be kind of fun. I just, I just enjoy Circus. I think it's adorable, so I, I tend to hold on to it. And uh, I'm trying to just use this move to finish him off because I don't want to get hit. Okay, well, that'll be that. Um, the cool thing about this is even if we need flame, Circus has some flame things. So we used it a bit earlier uh, to melt some ice because it was the only fire thing ab available. But yeah, we can melt ice with that either that move or the juggling move because we can light that up. So it's cool that a lot of the moves have, uh, a lot of the powers have multi-purpose things, like that has fire, as well as just being a fun, cute ability. Um, we do need fire here to light that fuse. And then we need to quickly use these cannons to launch all the way up this pillar here. 
actually no, we don't need to light the fuse. Don't light don't go in the cannon. Don't go in the cannon. Because you need to drop to the right here. Open this chest. And there's your rare keychain for the owl. Now we need to go light the fuse. Yeah, they kinda play with your expectations there a little bit. But if you can drop it on one side of the cliff, that might that uh, that probably should tick you off that there is something to do there. But anyway, light that fuse again, and now let's launch it all the way up again. You can also just go through the door, but this obviously leads to something special. And just barely got in there in time. This background is so pretty, though! Don't fall through the floor! Uh, not only with the fountains in the background, but just those stars going in a circle. At least I suppose they're stars. Or whatever they are. And then just the, the, the look of it, the colors, it's all so beautiful. Kirby backgrounds have always had a thing about just being absolutely magical. Uh, Return to Dreamland had some very, uh, very kind of complicated backgrounds as well. Along with just being pretty. Of course, it had the extra horsepower of the Wii behind it, so. Oh. I didn't realize he was going to jump into the foreground. I thought he was going to... Uh, fuck. I'm going to be ready for you this time. You, you can go off the cliff. I don't care about you, but I'll be ready. Now you're dead and I have your key. I thought he would go right again and jump off the the, the cliff. I was going to be ready for him. But nope. Jump into the foreground and die. Alright, sure. You do your thing, man. I think down here, I think there's a keychain. Nope, there is just death. That's... That's nice. And coming up, we have another Hypernova section. This is actually one of the cutest ones. So first off, we have to suck up all these snow particles? I actually don't know what those would be. But it's adorable because we have to match the heads of snowmen. This is kind of something they've also made a tradition in Kirby uh, since Return to Dreamland. You did it in Return to Dreamland with um, the Mega Ice ability, the Hyper Ice ability. And uh, in, in Robobot you do it as well, though in a, in a very different way. You do it in a different way every game. I mean, first Kirby is the snowman head, now we're actually matching snowman heads and Robobot returns the snowman heads. Or keeps other snowman heads, but does it in a very unique way. So, they find a lot of ways to make snowmen relevant, which I like. So, we need to be very careful to not melt the snowman's head. Uh, it doesn't melt instantly as it touches the fire, it just melts very, very quickly. So, you have a little bit of leeway, but not much. You kind of need to be quick about it. Not Gordo. Gordo's even invincible to Hypernova. I think they're also invincible to Super Villies. But I can't actually ever remember if you ever could attack a Gordo with a super ability, but hey, whatever. So that, excuse me, that snowman is obstructed by some snow particles. So we seem to reveal him. And as well, there is a, um, well, a, a spike pit here. You don't want him to fall in there. I don't think you, I don't think he dies if he falls in the spike pit, but obviously you can't really get to him. I'm actually going to wait for this to go again because I don't feel safe bringing him across right now. Yeah, see, he touched the fire a little bit there, got a little bit upset, but he's alright. He's fine. He'll get over it. <laughs> They're just so adorable and so happy. I love it. Anyway, we got a husband and wife snowman here. We just, uh, we just, need, we, we just need to match the uh, heads to the appropriate body. You're a little bit lopsided, but that, that's alright. That doesn't matter. I really wish they would have just angled these, though, so they weren't lopsided when they went on the heads, though. Because it bothers me. But hey, they're happy now. And they can go home. But not, if they give, not before they give me the reward of a sunstone. And now we have something even more adorable coming up. This Hypernova section is just the cutest. We have these little bottle dees hiding in houses from us. If you didn't, expect, if you, if you didn't think they were terrified before, now they have a good reason to be. We are sucking up their homes. But they get away at least. Steal their medicine, Jesus. That's just really, that's like illegal. Steal someone's medication. They needed that to live. Or whatever, Those, they, they were holding a sunstone. It's completely legal to steal jewelry, apparently. 
I do, I, I kind of wish these d things did have a story relevance. I mean, the boss ones do, because they help grow the dream stock, but otherwise, they're just kind of there. The energy gears in Return to Dreamland were said to have a story relevance, they really didn't. But, um, they kind of, at least, like, Magalore mentioned them. But no one really mentioned Sunstones, they're just kind of a thing to be there. And I get that, that's fine. I just kind of wish they had made them somewhat relevant in the story. And oh, yeah, we need to be careful here. We need to keep this missile so that we can uh, blast his uh, wooden pillar there. And there we go. And as they realize what happened, they've accepted their fate. <laughs> and they're dead. But hey, we get to go. And that's all that matters. And, oh, I think that's in one. I was about to say seven again, but... Uh, yeah, that's a one. Hi. And our key change this time. Miss, I, well, I was talking about Mr. Kirby before. <laughs> I love his finger. He just, like, he's really upset and pointing at us. Like, he's the upset father. Talking about Nightmare, of course. I don't think anything we got even had fingers. Anything else we got, rather. Honestly, don't know why they bother placing Sunstone restrictions on these, um... These bosses, because you get more than enough Sunstones without even really trying to open the boss doors, so it's not... It, it doesn't seem necessary to me, but hey. Whatever. We have unlocked our extra stage, of course, so let's go ahead and tackle that. And this introduces uh, two Sunstones to the extra stages. And honestly, one of the best songs from Return to Dreamland. I just, I love the piano, all right? It's, it's a good instrument, especially for snow levels. It just works really, really well to match the aesthetics of them. Especially when we're, oh, especially when we're just ripping through these levels with fire and burning everything in our path. All these skiing waddledies, these skeeties, I believe they're actually officially called. They get to die. All because we're on fire. And there's Ninja. I think I just want to keep fire because I do really like the ability to just drop on the floor. Kind of like the uh, the drop dash that will be in Sonic Mania. And I think Sonic Forces? I don't know. I don't know if they ever confirmed it was in Sonic Forces, but I think one of the trailers, like, it looked like it was there, so people assumed it will be. Anyway, as soon as we enter this room, we want to enter the Snow Glue. Snow Glue? Igloo made of ice and we'll keep these guys alive they're just living their lives sleeping in the igloo we came in woke them up stole their jewelry again of classic kirby memorabilia what <laughs> you don't wait you don't get like keychains of memorabilia you get them of characters keychains of memorabilia would be kind of lame keychains are memorabilia anyway just escape this hole here and then run along these snowballs Gotta be careful not to run into them. It's even if you run into them, you'll be crushed. It doesn't really make sense. But ignore that door for a little bit and drop down here. Because there's a keychain. And now you don't really have to worry about snowballs. Because they stop coming. But of course, I get hit by the ones already there. Because I'm impatient. This song's nice as well. But it's, it's a complete uh, contrast from the very calm music that we just heard. But uh, well, it's a nice song anyway. Oh, there's enemies in our way. So all these trains, you might notice that there was a chest on one of them. But we don't have to wait. No, there wasn't? I thought there was. I thought we needed to do something. Okay, well, there's trains for the sake of being hazards, then. You can go and heal up there with the chair we had as an item. I thought, I thought there was... Man, I'm thinking of something else. Man, I'm thinking of a hypernova section. I don't know. Anyway, we need to use Cutter to kill these two, um... Keys, because we need their two keys to unlock this door. These doors rather than the sunstone, because we can't just drop through that platform. Why they replace? Why? Did, wait, what? Why do they even bother giving you more enemies? I guess. I guess so you can test the timing if you miss the keys. You can test the timing on like how you need to kill these things. That's the only reason I can think of. I don't know. <laughs> kind of, kind of weird. 
But I believe we're coming up to the end of the stage here. We need to dodge all these uh, dropping pillars here. Kind of annoying when they're in the fore Oops, sandwich. Kind of annoying when they're in the foreground because you can't really see what you're doing. So if you get held up by something, it's kind of difficult to make any corrections because you can't see. But hey, it looks visually cool, I guess. And then we seem to float. Oh, whoa, that was fast. Okay. Uh, we haven't really shown off ninja in combat yet. We haven't really had hammer either, but frankly, I'd just be using that up attack, so there's not really much to see. So, we're, we're just going to go with ninja. Especially since we get to stand up behind him. And cut his butt. And also grab his ice cubes, which I did completely by accident. I kind of just meant to dash there, but... Hey, that works too. We can also throw these daggers, which can do some really quick damage. Uh, but, eh, it's alright. And I... Okay, yeah, see, that's what happens when you suck up a uh, mid-boss as well as your old power. You prioritize the mid-boss's power, which is really appreciated from Return to Dreamland. Or, that's a change from Return to Dreamland, rather. And just need to launch, that's probably a two. Yeah, rip. A bird gets to live for now. How does Kirby eat those? <laughs> like, they just go into his head. <laughs> this, this is one of the most remembered characters from Superstar. And he's like, it's just a bird. But, going to the boss, he looks a little bit familiar if you've played Kirby games before. Just a little bit. Uh, we don't really need- oh, the medicine's better again. So, might as well just grab him. Uh, da -da -da, have we really- I don't think we've shown off Parasol yet at all. Uh, you just get an umbrella. <laughs> one, one cute thing about it, rather, is you can just kind of float down. Maybe it looks really happy. Otherwise, uh, it's kind of like sword, but you can- hold it here forever and change direction so you can do a lot of uh, hits on enemies really quickly you have a little uh, drop attack like this and otherwise you just have a dash attack and it's pretty much the same as sword except now you have an umbrella Since Krakos made Floralia part of its territory, it's being fed by a mysterious power source, so its attacks are stronger than ever before. But yeah, Krakos is a boss that has appeared a lot in Kirby games. It's been, I think, in every single one, right? Except Return to Dreamland? I think. Because it was, it was even in, like, Amazing Mirror, which makes sense because, um, that dimension was in the sky. So it could be there instead of... Because of Amazing Mirror wasn't another dimension. It was just a different land. But yeah, uh... Cracker's weird, because in the pause screen description in other modes of this, it will say that he's been defeated countless times, but he'll never give up the fight if there's still clouds in the sky. So Cracker's basically invincible, unless Kirby eats all of the clouds. Which, frankly, I can see Kirby doing. Because Kirby's maniacal. But hey, you never know. The one thing that I remember about Krakow, and then why he's actually one of my favorite bosses in the series, gotta get to the canon, is um, the Kirby anime, uh, right back at ya. One of the first episodes I remember watching, it might not have been the one I did watch, but it's the one that I remember the most, is the Krakow episode. And I don't remember why I remember that one the most, I just do. And by remember it the most, I mean, I remember Krakow was in it, and it looked kind of cool, and that's pretty much all I remember. But hey, that's more than I remember distinctly about any other episode I watched as a kid, so that's quite a bit. Anyway, we need to get in and out of the background to avoid Krakow's attacks. That are that one is avoidable. I don't know why we need to go into the foreground for that, but hey, whatever. Now he's just an eye. Uh, damn! That must have hurt! He got hit in the eye with like a wrench. Or like a bolt, rather. Jesus. Poor thing.
with the dream stock further up, we can go to Animal Crossing Land or Wild World. That's a joke, kids. It's a haha -ha funny. That water must be really annoying for the people of Dreamland. Constantly pouring down onto the surface from Wild World here. Anyway, that's gonna be it. So, yeah, we cleared out uh, Old Odyssey, killed Krakow again for the, like, f 15th time or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. See you guys next time for Wild World.